Hi guys, this is Mike, and in today's video, we're going to be continuing our series on research methods using Logos Bible software. In part two today, we're going to be talking about using Logos to take notes that are searchable and recoverable at a later date. So sit back and relax, and let's go ahead and dive right in. In part one, we looked at searching. And the particular topic we're searching on is the extent of the atonement. And we're looking in particularly at the, to the conversation of limited versus unlimited atonement. For whom did Christ die is ultimately the question we're trying to answer in this research. So once we have our resources open, and if you're interested in looking at the video on searching, you can find that up there in the top right hand corner. We're going to want to begin to notate. So I've still got my search and my resources open, so I'm going to go ahead and unhide my home screen so I can see my layout as I last left it in our previous video. And notice that we've got our search results here, and if you'd like to copy this search, feel free to go ahead and do that. And if you once again want to see how we came to this search, go ahead and consult the last video. But we've got our five theologies open, and all of them are open to major sections or chapters or articles dealing with the extent of the atonement. Now we've got a few different articles from different perspectives in theology. We've got a kind of Baptist perspective, a Reformed perspective, a Dispensational perspective, uh, another Reformed, and then we've got a Methodist uh, slash Wesleyan perspective. So we've got different perspectives from the theological world on this particular topic, which I would always highly recommend to do. So now let's say we want to begin to add notes to this. Now when thinking about notes within Logos, it's important to use a metaphor in order to make sense of this. Think about notes like filing folders that you're going to be storing content in. And in these folders, you're going to be putting those within a filing cabinet. And one of the great things about this is that you can go back through this filing cabinet and search and find these notes that you're taking really effectively and easily or you can stumble upon them as you're reading the text. So either way, you've got notes that you stumble upon as you're reading throughout your book, just like you would if you wrote notes on a book, but you also have them stored in this easily accessible filing cabinet that can then be searched. So these are two different ways that you're being able to access your notes. So in order to start taking notes in Logos, what you want to do is actually create a new notes document, or what you'll hear me call a new notes file within your documents menu. So go up to the documents menu, and then on the left hand side, you want to select the option for notes. So this will open a new note file, and let's go ahead and name this note file Extent of the Atonement. So this is where we're going to store all of our notes on the extent of the atonement. So what in essence we've just done is we've created a new folder which has a title attached to it and this is where we're going to drop, drag and drop or store all of our notes on this particular subject. So if we come back over here to Millard Erickson and we scroll down and we find a section that we really like, uh, I'm just going to select a section at random just so you can see how this is done. We can highlight that particular thing that we want to add a note on right click within that highlighted section and then in our context menu make sure you have the very first option on the right hand side called selection you have that clicked on and then in the bottom left notice we have an option to add a note to extent of the atonement so if we click that it's going to add a note to our note file in essence we've just dragged and dropped a note into our file and from here we can add additional content to this we can say this is really compelling and obviously you can add more than that. We can also change the title of this note. Notice when you select a section of text, it actually gives you by default a title that abbreviates that section for you. And then we can also change the note uh, highlighting style or note icon style. Over here on the left hand side, notice mine is set to a red square. If we click that, we can change the notes indicator style. So if I'd rather it be a circle, I can change that and I can change it to yellow color. And I can also change it, notice right now it's set to highlight with note color. I can also set it to no highlight, or I can choose one of my available note styles in order to, or highlighting styles in order to mark this in the text. So I'm gonna go ahead and stick with no highlight because all I want is just a little indicator of my note. And notice on my text, now that I've changed that, 
I've got a little yellow circle and you can mouse over that. It shows you the content of your note um, and notice there's no highlighting attached to this now. If I like to keep this note as my default style for all future notes I take in this file, we're going to want to click the icon in our note file again and we're going to want to select at the very bottom use this style by default. So I'm going to go ahead and click that and now anytime I make a note in this uh, uh, note document it's always going to use a yellow circle with no highlighting. So I can scroll down in this chapter again and maybe I find something else that I like. Uh, maybe I see, oh, here's a conversation on particular atonement, and here's Millard Erickson's ideas on that. Once again, I can right-click on that, select Add a Note to Extent of the Atonement Notes, and now my note has been added to the folder and marked with a special indicator, just like it was before. Now, if I go ahead and close my note, so I'm going to go ahead and close my note file, I can actually open this note file again by simply mousing over the note indicator within the text. I can click that and it relaunches my notes file just from where I got started. So I'm going to go ahead and go open to uh, GT Shed's Dogmatic Theology and I'm going to add another note to this. Same process, add note to extent of the atonement. Um, and notice within my notes file here, I also have a hyperlinked um, text in the note that has the exact location of where that note is located in the text that I just added it to. So if I want to go back to this note within Millard Erickson, I can click the, the hyperlink and it's going to relaunch Millard Erickson to the exact place where that note occurs. If I want to go to the dogmatic theology, same thing, I'll click the link, it takes me right to where I just added my note. So I'm going to go ahead and go through and add a few more notes to um, highlight this for you. Okay, now that we've added some notes to our note file, we've got quite a few from the different resources we have open. Let's say we want to reorganize these notes. Let's say we really want to have this one um, from Ryrie's Basic Theology towards the top of our note file. Well, we can really easily drag and drop these around in order. All you need to do is just simply go over to the, the icon and click and drag it up in the note file. That's one of the easiest ways to do that. So another thing that we can do is we can reorganize these, one by clicking and dragging them, or we can go up to the note file, note document menu, and then sort by the different options. We can sort by reference, or we can sort by title, or note color, or date created, newest, oldest, or date modified, newest, oldest, uh, so on and so forth. We can also select show citations. So it actually will show the actual citation within the note field from where we grabbed that particular note. So I'm going to go ahead and turn that off for right now. And I'm going to sort by reference so that way all of my different references are together. So all of my Erickson notes are together um, and all the different basically from whatever resource I grabbed that from. Let's say we really don't like having some of these notes in this file and we want to create a new file or new document within our notes. Well, we can go up to our documents, open a new note file, and let's say we want all of our reformed, um, reformed views added to one note file. But we won't, don't want to have to go back through and re-tag all those other notes for this new note file. How can we get them from one note file to the other? Well, it's really easy. All you need to do is just simply drag and drop them. So I've got this one from the Dogmatic Theology from William G.T. Shedd, and I want to drag that into my Reformed Views note file. Simply click the yellow indicator, drag it over to my new note file, and drop it in. So that's all you have to do. So I can do the same thing for, how about this one, Burkhoff Systematic Theology. Click and drag that over and drop it in, and we've got our notes now dragged into a new file or a new document, however you'd like to, to call it. You've also got different views within your note file. So here I can see a compact view, which basically just shows me the title with a small little bit of content to the right. We've got a split note view where we can click on each individual note and then see the content within that particular note. Or we can actually go to what's called quotes, where we can see each full quote of the section that we actually highlighted and added to our note file. So these are different ways that we can view our notes. One of the ways that we can help to have our notes be more findable is to add keywords and tags to these notes. So in particular, let's add these things to the con to our uh, to tagging. So if we change our view to split, 
And then we select one of our notes that we've made. Uh, notice this is from Millard Erickson's Christian Theology. We can add a tag down below and let's name this one Baptist because this is a particularly Baptist perspective. And we've got here, this is um, Ryrie's basic theology. We can add a tag and say this is dispensational. And then we can also take a look at, uh, here we've got Odin's systematic theology. We can say, well, this is Methodist. So we've added these tags here to our notes in order to help us find uh, additional options here. So now that we know that we've tagged these, or we can even add additional content to this and say, uh, this is the Methodist perspective. And notice this isn't tied directly to any particular section. I'm just using this for example. We can go ahead and close out our note file. So I'll go ahead and close out my note file. And if we come back and open a new search, we can actually search just our documents. If we go up to where it says all resources, we can change this to your documents. And now let's go ahead and find that instance where we typed Methodist. And notice that we've got a search hit here. So this is actually finding all of the content that we've typed into our note. But also notice we've added those tags. So once we were in our note, we can do a command F or control F and then find just notes and filter notes based upon the tags that we've added to them. Notice that this one was tagged Baptist. If we do this instead for Methodist, we can search that and it finds Odin's note. So there's two different ways that we can search our notes, either by the content through our search panel or through a control F that searches tags. So either way you want to go, you can actually stumble upon and find your notes as you're adding them for your research. So I hope that this video was helpful in showing you some of the power and extent which you can go when adding notes to content within your Logos library. If you like this, go ahead and click the like button or feel free to subscribe to the channel for future videos from this particular series on research methods. I hope that you're more equipped to dig deeper into the depths of the scriptures using Logos Bible software. Until next time.